In this session, we are going to consider business spreadsheets, like Microsoft Excel. Now, Excel would be used um, to present large quantities of financial data, and Excel would perform a number of calculations for the user, which is going to save on time, and it can also be used to present information using charts and graphs and so on in a very easy-to-follow manner. So if we consider then our F2 syllabus and what kinds of things we could use spreadsheets for in our F2 syllabus, we could use it, for example, for forecasting. If you recall, we've looked at regression analysis, for example. And we saw that the calculations can take quite a long time. If we were to perform these calculations in Excel, it's going to be considerably faster. And it might be particularly useful if we have large amounts of data. We could also use it for showing time series graphs. Again, instead of us having to do calculations or us having to prepare graphs by hand, it'll be far quicker and neater to show this information in an Excel spreadsheet. We could also use it for other planning activities like budgeting. So we would enter some raw data into our spreadsheet and Excel will do some of the calculations for us. Now at F2 level, you're not going to be asked to prepare a spreadsheet from scratch because it's a computer-based exam. However, what you could be shown is an Excel spreadsheet on the screen, and you would be expected to know how Excel is calculating certain formulae in that spreadsheet. So let's have a look at a very straightforward ap application of our spreadsheet. So here we have a budget that has been prepared in an Excel spreadsheet. As you can see across the top, we have our column references, A, B, C, D, E, and so on. Along the side, we've got our row references, which will be numbered. So this is typical of a spreadsheet. The column references are letters, and the row references are numbers. Now this means that every single cell within this spreadsheet has a unique cell reference. So for example, the cell I've highlighted here would be cell B1, meaning it is in column B and it is the first row within column B. And every single cell has a unique cell reference. So if we have a look at the information that's being presented in this particular spreadsheet, on your left-hand side, in columns A through C, we've got our budget information. Now, in columns E through G, this is just provided to us to tell us how the different numbers are being calculated in the budget. So, if we have a look in cell C3, which is our sales figure, that has been input by the user. Likewise, our production costs in cells B5 to 7 have also been input by the user. However, our total production costs in cells C8 of 7,000, this is being calculated for us by Excel. If we have a look in cell G8, this is telling us the formula that is being used in cell C8. So the total production cost is the sum of material, labor, and other production costs. And we can see that our formula is just adding together the cell references for these production costs. So our total production costs is the sum of cells B5 to B7. If we input this formula into Excel, 
it does the calculation for us. Gross profit then will just be our sales revenue minus our total production costs. So in this case our sales revenue is in cell C3 and our total production cost is now in cell C8. So our gross profit is just equal to cell C3 minus cell C8. Non-production costs have been input by the user and our net profit then, which is just gross profit minus our non-production costs. Our gross profit is in cell C9 minus our non-production costs in cell C10. This is a very straightforward example, but we can appreciate how if we have much larger quantities of data, it'll be far faster if Excel is doing these calculations for us.